I really didn't expect this. Again, shooting with the Nikon, black and white mode. Inspired by the design of the FM2, with a vintage aesthetic, and the same process as the Z8 Z9, with a 24.5 megapixel full frame sensor and 8 stops image stabilisation, variable angle screen with dual SD card slots, and perhaps most importantly, a black and white mode. I really like this time of year for the weather and the light as well, because it's just something you can't really explain about it that's just particularly gorgeous. There's few times in a year that a camera manufacturer genuinely surprises you. Agola from um, MK, just uh, having a shoot in Cardiff, just being creative and just, you know, creating six shots. The light is absolutely beautiful today, and then with that you get such incredible shadows. So using the shadows here, I wanted to get the model in between the light areas and get some cool shots. I've been trying to get my hands on this camera for a really long time, and the reason for that is that it's... The only way I can explain it is that it's a work of art, and it's... What's the word? Nostalgic is a way to describe this camera, and... The way it makes you feel, and I talk a lot about on this channel, the way a camera makes you feel really needs to be the deciding factor as to what you're really spending your money on when it comes to buying a new camera. Most of the photos in this actual video were actually shot using the variable angle touchscreen, and it's a dream to use. Look down towards camera. This being my favorite actual variable angle touchscreen that is on the market at the moment as well. And I will say, Nikon, in this particular iteration, I, it just feels right. There's something about the camera that is exquisite in its internal makeup, but also the way in which it feels to control the camera from the dials, the ISO wheel, just everything about it, for the most part, is what I would quintessentially say is one of my dream cameras. Let's continue. I'm going to take this photo. Loving the photos so far. Let's check out some video. And then back at the camera. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go. The camera is capable of 4K 60 and that's at 1.5 times crop with the ability to do 120 frames a second of full HD. 3, 2, 1, look at me. These aren't mad video specs, but they are good enough. There's a great push these days for cameras to return to a simpler time. Although it's a 24 megapixel sensor, has everything you really need to just enjoy the art of photography. When I say the art of photography, this camera very much embodies that. I'm also going to take this photo. What I'm going to do here is, as the train takes off from the station, I'm going to set the camera to a lower shutter speed in order to get some motion blur. Great chance to check out that stabilization inside of the body. And, you know, hopefully get a cool shot. Let's do it. <laughs> what we've got here is Ramney just uh, standing here. We've got the bright ass sun smashing him in the face, and uh, it looks particularly badass. In particular, I quite like the shadow on this side of him, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. I did this entire shoot pretty much at 28mm f2.8, and it's a particularly interesting lens because Nikon have designed it to look like the old legacy glass, and you know, appreciated design, I guess. Nikon is one of the greats, and this camera shows that with the very nostalgic FM2 feel to it. Something camera manufacturers do is usually hold back specs. And when I talk about the fact that this camera doesn't have back anything, you've got the ability to vlog with it. You've got 4K 60, 4K 30 of course, but 4K 60 with a 1.5 crop factor, which if you're, you've got an A7 you're kind of used to anyway. Of course, it does feel a little bit weird using this as a vlog camera because it feels so much like a film camera. For me, the experience of shooting a film camera is what I like about it and just have fun with it. And oh boy, have I had fun with this camera. Some cool shots. Gonna use rule of thirds and uh, the shadow as a way to kind of like position. 
there's a switch on the control dial and it allows you to switch between photo, video and black and white mode and it feels right to be able to do that. I love black and white personally. Just test testing out the tracking capabilities of this so it's going to be on him and then three, two, one, go. Because of that Z8 processor, you've got a really easy to use and very powerful autofocus system, which does work pretty much across the board. And the last thing I wanted to test is the stabilization again for a cool shot that I have an idea for. Go. With the model standing in place, what I asked him to do is just shake his head as fast as possible with the slower shutter speed and with the right amount of stabilization, what you get is a really interesting effect and kind of shows you how good the stabilization is and how awesome this camera is ultimately. I'm holding a film camera here, but a film camera that's still capable of professional use in such a small and unique body. Unlike what you'd have out of an A7C2 camera, it has two card slots. Now, it's not two standard SD card slots, it's one micro and then one normal sized SD card slot there. But that's still super handy to have, and it's a unique way of thinking about how we can add two SD cards into one camera. The other thing that I find almost funny as well is that you've actually got a black and white mode straight off the dial. Now, I don't know if you know this about me, but I really like black and white photography, and it was really nice just to switch to black and white, take a couple photos. Yes, I've shot in RAW and JPEG for this, so what I'm gonna do is show what the JPEG looks like and what the edited photo looks like afterwards. Ultimately, I kind of gone over a lot of the reasons why I like this camera already. When it comes to picking a camera and finding a camera that's ultimately right for you, is the experience is key. If you're on the verge of buying one yourself, I would say get it because it's really, really nice to use. And if you're looking at this camera, you're looking at it because of the aesthetics, because you're not really compromising yourself on any of the specs. In fact, in many ways, this is one of the better specs kind of cameras you can buy. But for street shooting, I think this is amazing. I think you can get some really great quality footage out of it and I kind of want one. Is there anything I could see that they should improve about this? I mean it would be nice seeing 4k 60 at full frame because you know I think for me that is something that I like to use quite a bit and I don't necessarily like cropping in on my lenses. I like the lenses that I put on there to be the lenses that I put on there and the depth of field to match that as well. I think I'd like to see some more vintage style lenses coming out from Nikon. So throughout this entire shoot, I've been using the 28mm f2.8 and it's been a blast to use. So it's a bit wider from what I'm usually shooting, which is around 35. But I've actually shot with the 28 before and it's a really nice focal length to have. Of course, they do do the 40mm f2 as well, which I did actually use the non kind of vintage looking one um, out and about to test it out essentially. And that was also pretty awesome to use. Do I think this is the perfect camera? No, yes, maybe, I don't know. Could you repeat the question? I think it's a camera that I would buy. And that's saying something because I'm not necessarily the biggest Nikon fan. I think they've done a lot of things start to shine out in the industry from other people that have perhaps shot Sony for a long time, shot Canon for a long time. I think Nikon are like the underdog, not necessarily the underdog, the dark horse at the moment. They're producing some really awesome stuff. I can't wait to see what they do next. I really hope they do more with the ZF lineup, but you never know. I mean, this is for what all intents and purposes a retro hipster kind of camera and if it's something that they choose to go down with their design aesthetics for future cameras i don't really know it depends on how popular the camera is so if you like this video make sure you like follow and subscribe if you want to see more have a good day we have a whole host of really cool content and one of the cameras that i used quite a bit on this shoot was the insta360 ace pro which we just did a video on so click over here if you want to see that but also we do a 101 series so if you're thinking about primes zoom lenses then also click this video there as well